This is a close-up of the skipper cardigan from my book Stranded Knits and I'm showing you this because I want to talk to you about yarn dominance, what it is that makes one of the yarns pop out in a piece of work and one of the yarns recede in a piece of work. So I hope that you can see in this, this white yarn, this is my contrast colour yarn, is popping out. The stitches in this yarn look slightly bigger, in fact significantly bigger, larger in places than the stitches in the blue yarn. The blue yarn stitches, wherever there's a colour change, the blue yarn stitches tend to be smaller, shorter, squatter than the white, the stitches in the white yarn, which tend to be longer, altogether a little bit larger. Now, that's because of the way that these yarns were carried when the knitting was being done. And whenever you do a piece of stranded colour work, as long as you're not holding the yarns randomly, putting one down and picking one up, if you're maintaining the yarns with the same yarn hold throughout the piece of work, then you will get this effect of that one of the yarns will have a tendency to stand out more in the finished fabric. And I've chosen this piece of work because at the back neck we can easily see the stranding here. And I can show you what's happening in the stranding. Now, when I do stranded colour work, I'm holding the main colour yarn in that this work, that's the blue. I hold the main colour yarn in the same yarn as hand as my working needle. So, in other words, the main colour yarn I am throwing, I'm using that yarn with an English yarn hold or an American yarn hold. I'm knitting American or English style. Whereas the foreground colour yarn, that's the white yarn in this one, the foreground colour yarn I hold in the same hand as I hold my passive needle. So the foreground colour yarn is being held for continental knitting. So instead of throwing that yarn around the needle to make the stitch, I'm picking it up with the working needle to make the stitch. I pull it through the stitch with the point of the working needle from where it's held in my, um, well, left hand if I'm working uh, in a standard direction. And here we can see how that works. This is useful because we can see that this strand carries below here. That these stitches, these this row here, just above that white strand here, these white strands and this blue strand are clearly in the same row. So in the middle where this blue strand is, there were two white stitches. That's here, this point here, you can see below. It's making that in the middle. So this is where that little spot of white happens in the net. And we can see that where the, there are the two white stitches, We've not got a strand of yarn, white yarn at the back on the wrong side of the work. In fact, we have a strand of blue yarn. And you can see that the blue yarn is carrying above. This is worked in this direction, bottom up. The blue yarn is above the white yarn at the back of the work. And it works that way all the time. That the main colour yarn strands above the contrast colour yarn. And because of that, the contrast colour yarn has to further to go to get up into the stitch. It's carrying from below, slightly below the row. It's having to work from slightly below the row to get up into the stitch, below, from below the needle. And that makes the stitch slightly longer. So there's more yarn in the stitch because it's having to travel further to get up into the stitch. And that is what creates this effect of what we call yarn dominance, that this white yarn is dominant in this fabric. Whereas the stitches in the blue yarn tend to be smaller. Wherever there's a colour change, the blue stitches are smaller and the white stitches are larger. Because the blue yarn doesn't have to travel far to get into the stitch. It's there ready for the stitch already. Here, where it's making, making these blue stitches there. The blue yarn was travelling into those stitches from next to them rather than from slightly below them. 
And that is what makes the yarn dominant, like the contrast colour yarn dominant. I'm just going to briefly show you how that looks on the needles. Here's a piece of stranded colour work that I use for demonstrating in my classes when I teach stranded colour work. When I hold the yarn, I hold, in this piece of work, I hold, it, it, the colours are reversed in this in fact, this is the main colour yarn, can you see that's the background white in this one. So I hold that in my right hand for throwing and this is the contrast colour yarn and I hold that in my left hand for picking so that when I make a stitch, if I'm working the stitch continental method, I pick the stitch up with the point of the needle. If I'm making the stitch English method, then I throw the yarn in my right hand around the needle for the stitch. And it works similarly for people that hold both yarns in the same hand. So if they're holding the yarn continental method, there's always going to be that the yarn which is closest to the point of the finger will be the um, yarn that recedes in the work and the yarn that's closest to the, the hand rather than the point of the finger, the closer to the knuckles, that's furthest away from the point of the finger, that yarn will tend to pop out in the yarn work to be dominant because always this yarn is carrying above it on the back of the work. That's it everyone, thank you very much.